Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second webinar of the SUMP Learning Program 2. My name is Lasse Bond from Ruprecht Consult, and I will be moderating the session today. The webinar today, as you have uh, been sent the information already, is focused on the topic of data collection, analysis, and processing of data to develop an SUMP. And before we get started, I will quickly introduce you to the features of the webinar. For those of you that have been taking part in the introductory webinar in January, this will be a slight repetition, but I'll just quickly summarize this for the ones that are new. So all of you have also already successfully managed to dial in. So there's two options, either by phone or by computer, but I think I don't have to introduce that much. What is more important is the interactive um, features, because we would like you throughout the whole webinar, we would like to encourage you to ask questions, write questions, and answer to a few poll questions. So that's really a dialogue where we will be able to give you more information on the questions you have in your work. So there's four things you can do. Um, or there's three things you can do. By default, you're muted because we have um, 15 people with us today. So if everyone would be unmuted, it might be a bit uh, distracting. But if you raise your hand, um, and that you can see in the little button that shows a hand going up, if you raise your hand, we will see it and we will unmute you at the next opportunity and you can ask your question. Another way also is to write us your question down here in the question block. And then we will see it and we will be able to build it into the presentation and answer it whenever it fits best. So I encourage you also to use this feature of, uh, of writing your questions. And later on, you will show some polls popping up on your screen. When they come, we will introduce the question. My colleague Daniel will do that. And then you just answer according to what fits your situation. So we get a good, you also will get a good overview over the situation of your fellow participants. But uh, that's all about the features. Um, today, the webinar team from our side, that's me, firstly, as I said, the moderator, and my colleague, Daniel Frankel, who will start the polls, uh, report on the poll results, and answer your questions as they go. But I. Uh, without further ado and without a long introduction, um, let's get to what we can expect today in terms of content. Um, we will have two presentations. The first presentation is by Esther Kreutz from UBC about mobility vision, priorities and objectives, insights into the second e-course lesson. So she will give you a quick uh, uh, look outlook on the next uh, e course session that will start next week and then we have our main speaker for today we are very happy to have with us Marcin Wolek from the city of Gdynia who will present to you the data collection and analysis in preparation of the SUMP in Gdynia in Poland and afterwards um, of course throughout the presentations you can already mention your questions but afterwards we will have a dedicated slot an interactive part where we will discuss all your questions. Um, and then finishing with a wrap up and last announcements to be able to finish on time uh, at 11.30. So I hope that was clear so far. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And otherwise, I would like to um, show you quickly the two presenters I have already mentioned. Um, they will introduce themselves quickly when they speak and they will present their content. And now I would like to hand over the, the floor to Esther. Thank you.
Okay. Good morning, everybody. Also from my side, I hope you can now all see my screen and uh, my picture even. I think, yeah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, so as Lasse introduced, I would like to give you a short intro into the next um, e-course and into the next uh, phase of the SUMP Learning Program 2. Um, so I said, like, my name is Esther Kreutz. I work for UBC, the Sustainable Cities Commission. And um, I see that many of you uh, I have actually met already uh, in person in, in Sofia. So it's nice to see you here and also all the others of you that we haven't met yet. But now we come to the short, short introduction into what will, uh, what are you, what you can be waiting for in the next weeks. Um, the first e-course lesson that you have uh, already uh, accomplished was focused on the analysis of the mobility situation and your planning practices and this kind of finding out where you're actually standing, like how to set up the management structures, how to initiate the SUMP process, um, how to see where, yeah, like where you are and, 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 um, and how to organize this kind of a preparation of the process, so to say. And in the next e-course or in this next phase of the SLP2, we now go further, like how to create a mobility vision, how to set targets and objectives. Um, so the second learning block is called visioning. So it starts uh, next week on the 26th of March with the e-course. The e-course will last uh, until the 20th of April. Then we will have the um, uh, the uh, next workshop in Prague on the 26th of April, and then it will, the learning block two ends with the next webinar, so to say, on the 9th of May. And after that comes the third, third learning block, but you will hear more about this then in the next webinar. As usual, and as in the, from the beginning of this uh, SLP2, the, your facilitators are we at UBC, ECLE, Ruprecht Consult, and then we have also Eurocities on board that, um, uh, and our colleagues from Eurocities will organize the, the SLP workshop in Prague. The thematic expert city is uh, the city of Sofia in Bulgaria that we already visited with the SLP2 group uh, in uh, February. And evaluation, as usually, is done by Wuppertal Institute. So you will all, after the webinar as well, receive an a link to a short evaluation of the webinar. And um, yeah. So about the second e-course and the, or the second lesson of the e-course, the topic is uh, mobility vision, priorities, and objectives. So um, going further from the analysis of where you actually are, what your current mobility situation is, it's uh, time for the next step. And this e-course will give you input um, to how to develop a common vision for mobilities and how to set priorities and objectives. So um, before you do that, before you can do that, you need to know where you stand. And that's what you have done or what you have got gotten input to from the first e-course and what you have probably started to develop in your city as well. In your vision, you should, of course, address those problems that you, that you identified in your preparation phase, um, those issues that you came across, like what defines your current uh, situation, and also the perceived opportunities, like where you want to go. Um, a common vision, a common accepted um, vision is, uh, is, yeah, the cornerstone or at the core of every uh, SUMP because it shows the way like where you want to go with your plan and with your whole uh, mobility development. So uh, and that's why it's very important that it's very widely accepted. That means that it's not uh, only a top down approach, but that the vision is something that is created uh, in cooperation and it's widely accepted so that you also can implement the plan um, with the like that it that also the implementation of the plan later on will be accepted. Um, as you know, the sustainable urban mobility planning as such has at its core planning for people. So preparing an SUMP of course means to have the idea of we're planning for people, we're planning for a, um, a better quality of life for people at the core when you develop your own vision. So here is now a bit more concrete the um, uh, the content of the of the e-course lesson. As usual, it's divided in different units. So we have an introduction unit. The unit two is about public participation and the communication strategy. Unit three about strategic planning. Unit four is about the SUMP action plan. 
then we have conclusions and references as usual. So this is the structure. And now a few words about those different different modules or about this, those different uh, the different uh, units. So um, as I mentioned before already, like public participation and the communication strategy is very at the heart when it comes to developing a common and accepted vision. Like you will get some input and some resources to to read further and to to learn about how to create a vision of a um, livable city, how to create a public involvement strategy, and like how to implement it and when to use it. There will be some examples of different workshop methods, both for uh, like face-to-face -face workshops and also online um, participation methods. Uh, and then you will also find some 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 links to further further find other other um, ideas for that. Um, there will be uh, the topic of like how to to find the different actors and which stakeholders you should include, and uh, a focus on like how to co-create this vision together with your citizens, like. Um, how to use the local knowledge from the citizens and how to together create this vision that will be widely accepted. In the strategic planning section or in this unit, um, it will be um, focused on this setting priorities and targets and and um, how to um, yeah how to develop the shared vision and how to based on that will create this kind of different targets and priorities um, it's also here about co-creation so that it's this is accepted widely and um, you will learn about the role of long-term object objectives backcasting the time frame etc all related to the strategic planning context then there will be a section on the SUMP action plan that means uh, you will learn like what are potential SUMP targets and smart targets and how they relate to each other, how they relate to existing targets that you have in already planning documents in your city and relate to national targets and how, how, to, um, yeah, how, how to make all these targets coherent so that they support each other. And then um, to how to prepare an SUMP action plan. There will be two practical tasks. One about um, developing a vision and main objectives for your city, it's an exercise. And the second exercise is about defining targets and related indicators. So uh, the next e-course kicks off on Monday, it's March 26th. And uh, we really encourage you to to take the course and to be active and we also whenever you have questions to post it there in the discussion forum and we will also do our best to react on you as as quickly as possible and to have some interaction going on the website you should know already it's mobility academy um, if there's any issues technical issues you have just let us know so that we can solve that and um, that was it for the introduction Thank you very much. And uh, now I'm really happy to uh, hand back to Lasse. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. Um, that was a very interesting outlook on the first on the next e-course. And now we would like to dig into a, a bit of an interactive part. My colleague Daniel will start the first poll question now. So all of you participants, please answer according what fits your situation. Yes, and uh, we would like to start asking you about your experience in Sofia, your recent experience in the working session. What was the key lesson, the key takeaway lesson that you learned in this working session in Sofia? We would like to know if maybe a solution to tackle cooperation that could apply or maybe was an inspirational idea or engaging citizens in SUMP. Perhaps uh, you're, you learned that your SUMP challenges are similar to those from other cities or, of course, something else. Okay, answers are coming in. Let's give it a couple more seconds for uh, you to answer. All right, I'm um, closing the polls now.
And uh, let's see the results. 55% uh, of you said that an inspirational idea for engaging citizens in SVMP was your key takeaway. That's very interesting. And uh, to learn that your SVMP challenges are similar to other cities. Um, we also have some people who have other uh, takeaway lessons, which we would be very interested in knowing what they are. Perhaps you can send it as a comment in, in, in the question uh, um, functionality of the webinar. That'll be interesting to, to, to share with the rest of the participants, right? Uh, then we go back to Lasseth. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, thanks for the first overview. And now we would like to dig into the main presentation for today. And we will have with us Marcin Wallach, who is an experienced traffic planner who's been involved for many years in SUMP development in the city of Gdynia, as well as he is an associate professor at the University of Gdansk. And he will be presenting how the city of Gdynia collects and uses data for planning sustainable mobility measures and developing SUMPs. So I will now hand over the floor to you, Martin. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. I am showing my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. I hope so. If I don't hear any objection, I can start. Uh, welcome, everybody. And the uh, topic is uh, quite challenging uh, because the, I would say that there is endless demand for data when we are going to prepare <clears throat> any type of document, and especially such complex document like uh, SUMP. Uh, but I try to structure my, pre my presentation. I would like to present you a short uh, information about uh, SUMP in Gdynia. Then some questions we want to address. Uh, then I'd like to present you using traffic model for developing scenarios. Then monitoring, which is huge consumer of, of data. And then how to search partners for developing data and some conclusions. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not wait uh, until my presentation ends. I prefer a situation when any question is uh, raised uh, immediately, then we have uh, proper context and we can, and we can discuss on it. So as uh, Lasse and Esther told, uh, thank you for the introduction. I am a city councillor in Gdynia for almost 20 years. And a few years ago, within Civitas Dynamo project, together with Union of Baltic Cities and Ruprecht Consult, we started to develop first SUMP for Gdynia. So it was very, very challenging process. And we finalized it in November 2016 by adopting uh, SUMP as a city council act. It was quite successful. And now we are in very um, dynamic process of implementation of particular measures, but also trying to think about the improvement of our existing SUMP. So I will start my presentation now. It was our main idea how to approach SUMP uh, for the city of Gdynia. We thought it uh, had to be dynamic, integrated, interactive and advanced. All it meant that uh, our SUMP should be, should, should, had to be developed uh, in strong partnership with uh, different partners, not only because of, uh, of our metropolitan context, but also because of the strong uh, presence of different uh, scientific and research units different mixture of public transport authorities and quite complex political situation. Uh, if we discuss about stakeholder engagement, which is important for the next part of my presentation, 
uh, we defined uh, stakeholders in the first stage of our SUMP process preparation. Um, we highlighted public administration, city guard and police, public transport sector, academia, education sector like schools, non-government organizations and some important uh, companies important from traffic map of our cities. But uh, tools we used, uh, there were workshops, meetings, public debates, individual consultations with experts, conference, seminars, marketing research, which was very widely used for collecting data. We also developed a website, a Facebook profile, up to now more than 4,500 likes. And we used also advanced, advanced methodology for self-assessment, and I will speak a little bit about, a little about it in the next slides. As Esther presented before, we also tried to develop common vision of mobility. This is always trade-off between some general sentences but, and, and common agreement. The starting point for us was quality of life but quality of life linked with economic aspects, with environmental aspects, and with efficient energy uh, applied to public transport system. Uh, during our SUMP process, we developed four strategic goals, which uh, were attractive and safe urban space, safe and efficient transport system, rational transport choices, and effective uh, freight transport because we have very specific location of harbor which is almost in the close which is almost in the center of the city so my questions according to data management or data collection process in case of our SUMP were how does Gdynia work with data collection and analysis how are our concrete practices and which challenges have we encountered and how we did uh, overcome them. But I tried to go deeper in my presentation. So where data is being used within SUMP circle, what data seems to be crucial. We had a lot of challenges with some so-called easy data on modal split motorization index. We had traffic model, but the big question was, is it overestimated or underestimated tool for planning sustainable urban mobility? Uh, are we able to prepare SUMP without traffic model? And the answer is, of course, yes. Uh, we established strong partnership for data collection and analysis. So whom could we use for data collection and monitoring? So. I'd have started to define endless problems and challenges with data for SUMP. Problems we encountered was lack of data, lack of valid data, lack of verified data, lack of data in desired format, lack of representative data, and lack of data processed and transformed into readable information. And challenges are, I think, quite obvious among different cities. Data collection costs money, Data collection takes sometimes a lot of time. It needs different procedures. They should be processed and presented properly, not only in front of scientists or, or traffic managers, but to different stakeholders, sometimes without an academic background. Data collection process is growing legal challenge and will be even bigger legal challenge in the future. What we had big discussion about common definitions, like what is pedestrian journey? Is it journey on the distance above 100 meters, 500 meters? And uh, there is always discussion primary versus secondary data. So should we collect data for a certain reason or should we try to use data already collected? So I will start with uh, data audit. Uh, I think it is crucial, and it was very crucial for us, that we started to uh, research what data could we use in the initial phase of SUMP. And we put it uh, on the SUMP circle, and I tried to underline where we uh, 
can highlight uh, the highest demand for data, especially in preparatory uh, stages, like conducting self-assessment and reviewing availability of resources. Data is a crucial resource, so if we have some deficits, we should evaluate them properly and you know, think about uh, strategies, how to overcome it. And also in the point on identification of key actors and stakeholders. It is also important part because some stakeholders could have data we are interested in. Another issue, another stage was preparation of analysis and problems and opportunities and developing scenarios. So on this preparatory uh, stage, the demand for data was, uh, was very high and it was a big uh, challenge to uh, make a proper map, not only of data we want to collect, but also partners we can work together uh, for that. Also, data were needed in developing smart targets. And during elaboration, the plan, it is obvious that we need data for arrangement of monitoring and evaluation. So if I would uh, summarize this, this slide, I would say that the biggest uh, demand for data was in preparation uh, uh, stage, but also there are some data needs uh, uh, going across particular stages like rational and transparent goal setting, elaborating the plan and implementing the plan. One of the easiest data we can collect directly from national number of cars uh, uh, in the city. Usually we are transforming it into individual motorization index. And uh, here you can see the, uh, the process, uh, but of course this is only output data. The motorization index just brings you information about number of cars in the city and uh, is illustration of mm, complex processes. Uh, if we could um, dive more into district, we could uh, discover that uh, city is divided in case of uh, motorization index there are some districts more dependent on car and some districts less dependent on car but of course this is output this is result and we cannot see uh, the real structure of particular processes when we developed uh, scenarios uh, of mobility development in Gdynia we, we used the traffic model. This is a big question. Should we use traffic model or not? It depends on many factors. In our situation, part of our tasks in um, LA Civitas Dynamo project was also development of traffic model. So it was very good parallel uh, activity that we could use as an opportunity to enrich our SUMP uh, by traffic model. So we developed four scenarios and the output of a scenario was traffic situation modeled by two factors, uh, share of car and individual mobility of uh, citizens of Gdynia. We developed four scenarios. Uh, I don't want to spend uh, too much time on it, but one of the scenario is presented here scenarios uh, using traffic model were very efficient in uh, presenting a potential uh, situation to city council members. This is the most negative scenario. Uh, this is uh, traffic, uh, uh, traffic model for peak hour in part of our city um, in 2000. Uh, 17. And monitoring. Monitoring is huge data consumer. I brought a um, table of main um, uh, monitoring uh, indicators uh, for our SUMP. 
and we tried to, to develop a compromise between being very strict, between being very detailed, but also between uh, having access to data which we can easily collect. Because it is not a big challenge to develop very developed and complicated uh, uh, indicators. But I think the, the, the bigger challenge is to manage uh, and monitor the process. In such a case, we do not need very complicated and complex and complex um, and complex indicators. Sometimes we observe a tendency to cover every goal which particular indicator. In our case, we try to stick to all strategic goals and not to cover each uh, action goal with one indicator. And the final part of my presentation is uh, how to search for stakeholders, because if we can uh, collect stakeholders, we can collect some data. Uh, we focused on city office and its units, especially uh, spatial planning offices, uh, office in, uh, responsible for investment, office responsible for traffic management, for environment and for education. They um, uh, showed a lot of data. Of course, not every time in a format we desired, but we were able to work with those, I would say, internal stakeholders. Another important stakeholders were police and uh, city police or city guard. One of the most valuable source of data was public transport sector, especially public transport authority, public transport operators and railway business companies like railway infrastructure managers. Uh, obvious um, uh, partner in that case is academia and other scientific bodies, also non-government organizations and some companies. Sorry, I mix something. Oh. Okay. We use some primary data for SVMP in Gdynia, but they were primary data collected by public transport authority, which here is uh, uh, presented as ZKM Gdynia. UG is University of Gdańsk. We uh, work with uh, our public transport authority uh, for years uh, in case of some research. The main source of data were preferences and transport behavior of our citizens, which is uh, regular research conducted every two, three years and random sample includes 1% of population aged 16 to 70s. But of course, high representative uh, is achieved, but we exclude youngsters. So the result is that we underestimate cycling and pedestrian travels. Um, we also, to, to, to complete um, mobility picture for our city, we conducted also preferences and transport behavior of pupils in secondary schools. And we are going to uh, make it regular activity. First time we started in 2014. Uh, we also, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we also conducted research or on potential traffic improvements on main streets in central part of uh, Gdynia. Uh, there were three separate research, electronic questionnaire, so it was very easy and low cost activity to collect data. Uh, bigger challenge was to process data, but uh, the result was a partnership between the road authority of city of Gdynia and our university, because scientists usually search for data. And uh, if they can get data sometimes for scientific publication, we can make 
a good deal. Also, we organized uh, research on traffic volume and its structure on main streets in central part of Gdynia to get better knowledge about uh, pedestrian traffic. And uh, our public transport authority organizes constant research on quality, uh, like uh, about punctuality, regularity, and demand, profitability of particular lines, ticket sales. So it also uh, provides us a good uh, starting point for uh, development of some measures focused mainly on public transport. One of the biggest challenge for us was lack of data on pedestrians. Every one of us is pedestrian, regardless of uh, further travel by car, by bike, or by public transportation. But uh, what was one of the biggest, I would say, discovery in my city was the fact that we didn't have an idea how many pedestrians do we have. So we started to make first scientific research on it. But we found out that there is lack of common methodology, lack of common definition, what is, who is pedestrian. So we started just to uh, research traffic volume and its structure on main streets in central part of Gdynia. We found that pedestrian traffic share is around 22 to 25 percent of all journeys. And initial results were then confirmed by typical share of pedestrians in, compar in comparison to selected European cities. Uh, what is interesting that uh, from our public transport authority research, uh, uh, there is information that uh, pedestrians, but taken very strictly, they have only 11% in modal split. In our research, uh, the share is almost doubled. And of course, if we do not have uh, too much time or resources and we advise it to every city in Poland, when they start to complain, we do not have enough resources like you, we do not have established uh, cooperation with uh, uh, universities, we do not have very uh, scientific and passenger focused public transport authority, so we cannot collect the data. Uh, no, you can always use advanced uh, self-assessment methodology, although it is also quite uh, complicated and challenging, but with small guidance, it could bring very interesting results. Uh, I don't want to speak too much about it, but uh, we are able to, according to uh, advanced uh, methodology, we are able to develop the mission area and activity area we are able to develop uh, some important um, priorities. And here are priorities in Polish, but the highest priority was ticket integration of public transport uh, in metropolitan area, the uh, parking management, and uh, taking pedestrians into account when investment is planned. So we the identified uh, around 80 stakeholders, all of them were asked, and we got a good result for further uh, prioritization of measures. So such advanced methodology do not, does not require uh, huge resources and uh, it is not very time consuming activity. What are some certain areas to be researched? We also focus on school travels because Sometimes when we have lack of time and or resources, we have limited access to proper data. But in every city, schools are important mobility generators. But again, asking particular pupils might be time consuming, could encounter some legal uh, problems as well as organizational problems. So we focused on school directors as a main sources of knowledge. So we prepared short questionnaire uh, on school model split and safety issues, which was distributed uh, to uh, directors uh, in schools. And then we were able to aggregate uh, results. But uh, I put here and as an example, 
uh, one uh, mid-sized city in western Poland, which we were work, worked for their SUMP uh, two years ago. And we found a, a lot of interesting things according to um, school travels, uh, not only by pupils, but also by employees of schools. And it is good to be flexible and to let our partners to do their job. Uh, preparing SUMP for Gdynia uh, was, of course, complex uh, activity, but uh, parallelly, a lot of uh, scientific uh, bodies, universities are working on their own research. Sometimes it is good to merge together. Um, we developed a partnership with uh, Krakow, Technical University of Krakow, which is located more than 600 kilometers far away of Gdynia, but they had a project on the evaluation of functionality of urban space in city centers. Uh, so we proposed, please uh, come to Gdynia, we can support you, but you have to share with your data and findings. So it was a win-win situation. We got valuable input to our discussion on the quality of uh, urban space in the city of Gdynia and uh, Technical University of Krakow got also one uh, collected city in their uh, scientific research. And it was very interesting uh, input uh, to our SUMP. Another partnership we set up was uh, police. In Poland, I think that in many countries, police does have great data on traffic safety. We established early partnership, so we started to invite uh, representatives of police uh, at the very early stage of SUMP preparation in our city. And then we were able to uh, ask them about uh, data uh, which was quite challenging because data were collected in different format. They had to be reprocessed uh, and to, because of some legal and uh, yeah, about uh, because of some legal issues, we were not able to process them by ourselves. Uh, the total job had to be done by the police. But finally, uh, we were able to prepare a map uh, of accidents uh, in 2015 for city of Gdynia uh, in the vision by, of, by pedestrian cyclists, the drivers and passengers of cars. And this map was uh, highly evaluated by the police. So we established long-term partnership with police and the map of accidents in 2017 will be published soon and it will be a good input for our uh, improved SUMP uh, next year. And I said before, we used marketing research as a consultation process tool. There is a lot of uh, data we collected, a lot of surveys. Sometimes preparing a survey has not to be a scientific process. If we need some confirmation, if we need some uh, initial uh, data and information, we could just prepare a very quick questionnaire. We have uh, surveys, we have electronic surveys, we have a lot of possibilities now according to technology and we are able to deliver such a data quite soon with low cost attitude. So final slide, final slide. Mm. If I could do it again, if we could uh, do again our SVMP, I would start with uh, be less optimistic according to monitoring values. Usually we uh, assign some monitoring values uh, during process of uh, SUMP preparation. And usually we are strongly involved in work, so we are very optimistic. But sometimes it is good to take the data uh, to external evaluator to, 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 to make them more realistic. I would use, uh, again, easy data as a potentially explosives. I uh, mentioned in the beginning of our 
webinar motorization index. It is uh, widely available data, but it is output data which is inflicted by many external and internal factor, factors. And uh, it is possible to change, but in a longer period. And it strongly depends on consumer behavior, which is again modeled by so many factors sometimes we are not aware of. Uh, I would engage to some partners as early as possible. Our good point was that we engaged police in the beginning of our uh, process, but this time if I could do SUMP again in my city, I would, uh, I would engage also other stakeholders, especially from harbor freight uh, business uh, much earlier than, than I did. I would be less strict about data quality. Um, sometimes we tend to be scientists, but if we want to get uh, some initial knowledge about the process, we do not have to prepare huge marketing research. And uh, I would prepare much uh, detailed data audit in the first month of our SUMP activity. That's all, and uh, I had 30 minutes for my presentation, so I finished 10 seconds before. Thank you very much for attention, and I, I am waiting for your questions and, and uh, comments. Thank you very much, Marcin. and that was extremely interesting. That was also shedding light on a lot of issues that I'm sure that our participants will have questions on. Um, whom to cooperate with, where you can find good data, what could maybe be also easy and cheap ways. But before we get into the interactive part, we have two short poll questions for you. So, Daniel? Yeah, um, we would like to ask you about your own uh, experience and the circumstances regarding data and data collection in your city or your region. So, the first question is, um, is the data available in your city or region illustrating the extent of the problematic regarding transport? Yes. We have 60% uh, of the answers so far. Let's uh, give it a couple of more seconds for the rest of you to respond. Sixty-eight. Uh, yeah. Okay. Seventy-five. Let's close the poll now. Mm -hmm. And here are the results. So, wow. Seventy-nine percent of you say that the data available is is correct and it illustrates very well. Um, that's that's good to know. You have good quality data. Then let's go to the to the second. Um, Full question here, and this one asks, uh, what type of data collection tools do you use in your local planning processes related to mobility? And our options are recording the traffic flow on cities road network, interviews or on online or household travel surveys, a traffic model, smartphone apps, or uh, accident air quality statistics. Okay, let's give it a 10 more seconds. And we'll close the polls now. Okay, uh, here you can see the results. So 36% of you use interviews or line or household travel surveys. Also, uh, 
good number, 29% use the records on traffic flow and uh, traffic model with 21%. Uh, there's no use of smartphone apps. That's perhaps something to to build upon, to, to use the new um, functionalities available. And uh, yeah, last, we also have some 14% for accident and air quality statistics. Thank you all for participating. Uh, we'll go back to Lasse. Thank you, Daniel. Um, yes, and now I think um, we will go to the next part. And I would just like to quickly um, remind you of the possibilities that you can raise your hand and you can write questions. Um, I will just quickly. So because so far we have uh, no questions have reached us. So while um, Maya and Martin will start the interactive session and Maya will start with a few questions, maybe you can take the time and think about your questions. Was there anything in Martin's presentation that started some thoughts or some questions? Um, some ideas on more details that you would need to know to be able to do similar things maybe in your city. Um, and I see that the first questions are coming in. So I would just like to um, quickly Okay, but then I think I will hand over now to Maya, who is working with Esther in UBC, and who will be moderating the interactive session, which we have half an hour for. Um, Maya and Martin, please stay with us. Um, the floor is yours. Okay, good day from my behalf as well. So now we have, like Lasse said, now we have like some some time to discuss and ask questions from Martin. And thanks, Martin. I think that was like really interesting presentation. And I think you showed like what kind of, all kind of different kind of data. Data is needed to prepare SUMP and also like how, how cooperation with different kind of stakeholders is really important. And also, it was really good that you showed like that data is actually needed in quite many different phases of the SUMP. Um, we have first question here, and this is actually I also wanted to ask this one that Martin Berlin is asking that what was the biggest concerns or worries among your politicians when you prepared SUMP? And I could maybe add another question also to that, that how did you, did you use like some data? Because of course it's Im important to get political approval for the SUMP. So did you use some, some specific data to convince the politicians that certain measures needs to be approved? So the biggest concerns and worries among your politicians and then did you use like some Spend some specific data. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for for this question. Yes, this is always uh, uh, this is always big challenge when we prepare SUMP, and then uh, it is uh, it has a form of ready document, but it should be approved by the city council. And uh, what uh, data are crucial from perspective of uh, particular councillors? I would say that they are grouped on two levels. The first level is on very local level uh, focused on the district, because usually uh, councillors are uh, being elected from smaller areas than the whole city. So sometimes they are focused on a very specific area and uh, if we are able to present some data focused on that area, like pedestrians, like uh, traffic accidents, it is okay. So I think this, every types of maps, like uh, maps of accidents, they have strong impact to uh, decision, local decision makers. We are able to present uh, unsafe uh, crossings. We are able to present uh, unsafe uh, road sections to uh, highlight uh, safety problems. Another issue was also to present uh, data uh, focused on school 
uh, safety. It is always hot topic regardless of city and country. We are also parents, so every councillor is uh, strongly focused uh, on, on such uh, issues like safety of uh, small uh, pedestrians of, or small cyclists. And uh, going up uh, to the level of the city, I think that uh, very universal uh, data is data on modal split. But of course, modal split is a holy grail of all traffic managers and transport planners because uh, it composes of uh, many uh, sub data, like data on pedestrians, data on cyclists, data on car traffic. So I think that one of the biggest challenge was to establish a starting point as a modal split. And then modal split was a starting point for our modeling process and uh, negative scenarios were very good to present uh, consequences of not, uh, of not introduction of uh, SUMP. So both uh, very local level focused on district and also general level focused on the city. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Martin. I think this, like how to get political approval for the SUMBs, this is a really crucial question for many of the cities. Um, you showed like that you have collected quite a lot of different kind of data for your SUMB, but what would you recommend for smaller cities with a bit less resources that, well, you mentioned the modal split data, which is maybe always sort of the starting point, but what is really the most important data or where would you like start from if you have limited resources and you can't access like all kind of data? I would start like we used to start. I would start to research existing uh, databases and um, uh, elaborations uh, conducted by different uh, city administration units. I mentioned spatial planning department, environmental department, traffic department, uh, road maintenance department, uh, education department. There is a lot of data. Sometimes they come, they, they, they are stored in, in different formats, but we, in every city, I used to work in Poland, uh, in uh, Germany or in Ukraine, there, there was always a lot of data stored internally. So I think such data audit is the first uh, uh, crucial element because sometimes we can discover really interesting uh, data sets and uh, if we are able to use them we can save a lot of time and money so data audit uh, as the beginning okay thanks um, you also mentioned that one of the key goals for the SUMP in Dinia was to improve the quality of life and did you use or that of course like when we talk about all the sustainability aspects like economic, environmental and social sustainability. So maybe for the SUMP, the environmental aspects are easier to measure also, like did you actually reach the targets? But did you, how did you take into account the questions of like economic and social sustainability and especially like quality of life that how can it be measured that what, what are you actually like reached the targets like that? Yeah. Does the SUMP manage to improve quality of life in the city? So did you consider this topic? Yes, of course, but uh, to be honest, quality of life is so uh, horizontal and general issue that uh, it, uh, it could be linked almost to every uh, type of activity in the city. Um, if I could, uh, I answer in that way. If I could uh, work on SUMP in city of Gdynia again, I would stronger focus on environmental issues, especially on uh, air quality and uh, noise. At the time when we started in 2014, um, these issues were, in my opinion, a little bit underestimated but now they are very hot topic almost in almost uh, every Polish city. 
uh, we do not have big problems with air quality, but now we are developing better air quality monitoring. And this air quality monitoring might be very efficient in case of uh, monitoring of some results of SUMP implementation. So for sure, absolutely the environmental aspects. And from economic point of view, one of our uh, big discussions was economic availability of public transportation. Uh, at what cost are we able to deliver public transport services to different um, groups of our citizens? And one of major uh, indicator being discussed at the time was uh, was economic efficiency of public transportation. So relation of fare box to total cost of public transport services. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, we had last week in Tampere, we had this SLP one finalizing works but we discussed also like partly this and when it comes to quality of life one of the sort of indicators was mentioned like the number of students and young people in the city that that's a good at least many cities consider that as a really good in indicator that whether you have managed to improve quality of life in the cities um yeah if you also, if I could yep. interrupt you yep. uh, for this co last comment, especially uh, trying to get on board youngsters, we were discussing strongly about this concept 8 to 80 in the urban space. Uh, if uh, urban space is uh, friendly for eight years uh, child and for uh, eight years uh, old uh, woman or man, uh, it means that it is friendly for everyone. This is very interesting concept from Scandinavia, which we wanted to implement in our SUMP. And I remember that one of our uh, research was just easy observation of people on the street, but uh, uh, looking especially on, um, uh, on, on, on uh, parents with kids, how they behavior. Uh, do they let uh, kids uh, to play and to run or just they are uh, very strictly uh, guided uh, in the street because it is this is a result of the perception of safety on the street and that in that case it was very interesting for us to find out some I would say unpleasant places in our space uh, for kids and their parents. So this is very interesting, and I think it, it should be it should be focused uh, in the future by our traffic authority as well. Okay, thanks for the answer. Uh, you mentioned also that you have collected quite a lot of input from the citizens, and I don't know that Gdynia has been working with a lot with public involvement. And you have these mobility platforms and website and Facebook. So how did you actually deal with that? input that you got from like citizens that how was it like processed all the information so that you can get like useful inf input for the SUMP? Thank you for that question because yes uh, we developed a platform on uh, mobility uh, of the city uh, and also we developed uh, Facebook and uh, they proved to be very efficient tool in case of collection data. But to be honest, uh, they created a need for one person for constant management of those instruments like uh, website and, and Facebook. Uh, and then uh, data collection is only one element of the process. The second one is data processing and transforming them into information. But uh, in this, for this second stage, uh, there was a strong partnership with universities and I also represent university and we are always uh, ready to work for data, not, for, not, not, not only for money, but we all, all also are researchers, we search for data, we search for good case studies, so there is sometimes possibility to establish such a partnership uh, on completely non-money 
uh, like no money fundament. But uh, for management and operation of website and Facebook, there was at least uh, one person fully delegated to the tasks from the city of Gdynia. Yeah. Yeah. You have like also I encourage if if all the other participants have like questions to Martin. So now it's a good good chance to ask and you can just post your question in the question box. Um, you have mentioned a lot of times that cooperation with different kind of institutions is like really crucial to collect the data and then you can also save your own own resources. Did you have any any problems to get data from like I know that in some countries like cities struggle to get from example data from the public transport operators that they don't want to give the data and there might be also like some data confidentiality issues so did you have any of these kind of challenges? Yeah, we have constant problems with data. Uh, it is it is obvious that especially uh, we have a lot of legal challenges uh, according to uh, personal data protection and so on. This is uh, probably the the the, the, the problem uh, with with uh, wider using of uh, apps uh, because almost everyone now is using smartphone. It is very tempting to uh, install an app and to get really individual data on mobility. But of course, we have some clash with protection of privacy and we have to develop a kind of a compromise between what we want and about and and between uh, protecting uh, the privacy of our citizens. This is a big question now strongly discussed uh, on the EU level. But of course, uh, we had and we have uh, a lot of problems. Some uh, operators are not uh, very happy uh, to share uh, data with us. Sometimes they say that it's their data protected uh, system. We are unable to get it, but uh, I think for general mobility picture, you do not need uh, billion of, 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 of data. You can, you can start uh, what you have in your um, civic administration, in your public transport system, which is always somehow linked to public transport authorities. So I think that you can you can use a lot of a lot of data, and of course you can start uh, asking your citizens. You have technology, you have uh, apps, you have websites, uh, you have a lot of uh, dedicated websites to marketing research. So I think it is uh, just sometimes the. the biggest uh, challenge is just to start. Yeah. Then we have like questions coming also from the participants. Good that you are also activating. So we have here like, what data did you obtain from the universities? Uh, as a university, we prepared data on um, counting uh, pedestrians and cyclings in the city center. That was the first uh, area that my city wanted to get uh, some uh, new data, especially in the city center. So that was. And the second uh, one was uh, perception of uh, public space in the center of the city. That was data provided us by Technical University of Krakow under the uh, agreement. Uh, but we did, as a city, we didn't pay uh, and a Polish Zloty for that data. So we generally got uh, two streams of data from university. The first uh, counting of uh, pedestrian and cyclists, and the second one uh, perception of public space in the center of the city. Okay, thanks. And then we have next question that did you develop a web participation platform or any similar digital tool for crowdsourcing or is there any link that you could provide us? Maybe you could share a bit like that you had this mobile Nactinia platform. So that how was it working? 
Mobilna Gdynia was uh, developed by our road uh, management authority, also within Civitas Dynamo project. Uh, it is still active and uh, I know that city is still using it, although Civitas Dynamo project has finished and we uh, finally uh, approved uh, our SUMP in 2016. Uh, it still needs uh, some management uh, and, and, and work, so around uh, one third of Menmont uh, employee is dedicated to this uh, Mobilna Gdynia platform. Uh, and uh, the city is using it sometimes for data collection uh, as well, especially if there is uh, research on uh, potential uh, on potential uh, changes in traffic in the center of the city. This is a good way to communicate with uh, citizens. I am not sure whether I responded properly to question. I think you maybe had the link to that also included in your presentation, so participants can then then okay. check how the mobile Actinia is working. Um, okay. then, then we also have a question that how did you motivate your citizens to provide data? They are like on their <laughs> wishes, wishes and condition and how to really well, engage citizens in the process. Uh, we used different uh, we used different uh, different uh, forms of contacts with our citizens using workshops using in-house uh, interviews using uh, electronic uh, questionnaires uh, asking them directly on the streets or sidewalks uh, so i think such a diversification of forms of contact was the best insurance in case of lack of response or activity of our citizens. Sometimes people don't want to respond being asked directly on the street, but uh, we have this, this uh, Mobilna Gdynia website, so people can return home, they can, they, they, they can answer, to, they can answer uh, directly via, via Mobilna Gdynia. I, I print in uh, link to Mobilna Gdynia here. I probably, I hope it is visible. So, so, so... Uh, Esther well, also yes. shared, now it's in the chat okay. book, Esther shared the link. Yeah. The link, so yeah, yeah, you can yeah, check yeah, yeah. that. But of course, this is big, this is problem because some part, some certain part of citizens are less open to discussion or to research, like elderly people, uh, or, or people with lower economic status. But of course, we are approaching them as well. And of course, there is also a big challenge uh, with uh, uh, electronically excluded people. If we focus only on uh, internet or apps, uh, we can easily lose uh, people without proper connection to internet, which means elderly people. So we have to ask them in a different form, like interview, on the street interview, in-house interview, and things like that. So it's like really the, the combination of different kind of methods that you need this traditional face-to-face, -face, and then also maybe these using new technologies. Um, related, uh, if, if nobody else has any questions, I still have one related also to poll question because we were asking the participants that what kind of tools you have used and nobody had used used like this mobile app. So is Dinia, Dinia, have you used any like smartphone apps or are you have you, have you been considering to use those those for the data collection? We are considering now because when we started in 2014 uh, Using app was not very popular, especially among uh, different uh, types of citizens, especially elderly people. Now, uh, popularity of smartphones uh, is growing. We expect that around 75 uh, people in Gdynia uh, use uh, smartphones. And we are now working with, with one IT company to 
develop app uh, for tracking their daily mobility. But as I mentioned before, we have to we have to be careful with uh, personal data protection system, which to some extent creates some clash with our uh, with our demand for data. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Those are important questions to consider. Okay, but thanks a lot, Martin, for your answer. And I think we will final end the interactive session here. And I will give floor back to Lasse, who still will wrap up the webinar. But thanks a lot, Martin, for the answer. Thank you very much. Uh, on the presentation, you have my email. So if you uh, come across any question, ideas, uh, do not hesitate to contact me. I am very interested in every SUMP activities around Europe. Thank you very much. I was very uh, pleased and honored to uh, share with you with some of our uh, activities in Kenya. Thank you. Thank you, Maya and Marcin. Um, thank you, Marcin, also for being available for questions uh, if they come in after the webinar. Um, we have come almost to the end of the webinar. What I would like to do is just to wrap up in five minutes. So please give me a second to share my screen. Um, Because, so maybe also a last comment from. Pardon? You want to show your camera? Oh, and yeah. um, so maybe also a last comment from my side to um, to to the mobility app tracking. And this is really a new field, and so it was not surprising that there was uh, no one using it yet from the participants. We have one of our cities in sums up. Malmö, who is going to test such a mobility tracking app as part of the Civitas Sums Up project. So that might also be something to keep an eye on in the next one to two years if you're interested in using this in the future, because they might uh, yeah, give you some interesting lessons learned if you want to use it yourself. Um, but otherwise, uh, so what I would like to show you just or remind you of is whom you can contact in case of any questions. Um, so um, I'll just keep this here. This presentation, um, Martin's presentation, and also the recording of the webinar will be uploaded on the, um, in the ECOS, on the Mobility Academy. So if you want to go back and revisit something, um, please do so. And uh, so the only thing that I'd like to do now before, um, before ending the webinar is to announce the next steps, which um, have been uh, mentioned already. The first thing will be the e-course. The second uh, lesson of the e-course will start next Monday. As you know the procedure, it's like the last time you can maybe uh, yeah, think about two to three hours per week, which will, it will take from you and it will be the four to five uh, units that have been introduced by Esther earlier on and then after the ECOS we will have the next workshop which will be on the 26th of April in Prague and will be organized uh, by Eurocities uh, with the option with a very good and interesting opportunity I would say to also take part in the Eurocities mobility forum the day before so please register as soon as you can for the workshop and latest uh, before April the 10th so that they can make all the arrangements for you. And with that, I would like to thank you for listening. I would like to thank all of the speakers for sharing their presentation and thoughts and a special thank to Marcin who has shared his really interesting insights from Gdynia with us. And I'm looking forward to the next steps of the SUMP Learning Program too. Goodbye. <laughs>